Hello friends and neighbors, this is Pastor Stephen Wall coming to you again from St. John, St. Peter Lutheran Church in Cleveland, Wisconsin. This is our third in a series of devotions going through the book of Galatians, Paul's letter, the Apostle Paul's letter to the churches in the area of Galatia, that would be in the middle of Asia Minor, uh, modern day Turkey. Uh, He's writing to churches that he had helped to establish on his first missionary journey. He visited them again on his second missionary journey. And it was probably during that second missionary journey when he wrote to those churches to encourage them, but also to confront some false teaching that had come in to those churches and was causing trouble for the Christians there. So Paul writes to them, We're picking up in Galatians chapter 1 at verse 11. Paul has already uh, confronted the problem, right? That this false gospel, which was no gospel at all, was being preached. And that was the trouble. That this, they were calling it a gospel, but the ones who were preaching it, uh, they're elsewhere, they're called those of the circumcision party, Uh, Sometimes they're called Judaizers in the Bible. These are Jewish Christians who maybe got a little bit jealous about this idea that that Jesus was a Messiah, not just for them, for the cho- God's chosen people, the descendants of Abraham, but Jesus was the Messiah for all people, Gentiles included. And, and so some of those Jewish Christians were trying to force the Gentiles to start following the Old Testament ceremonial laws, the ones that they had held themselves to for uh, really for, for centuries, even millennia, the, the Old Testament ceremonial laws. And so those Jewish Christians, the Judaizers, those of the circumcision group, were forcing Gentiles to uh, be, be circumcised, probably to follow other, uh, probably the dietary laws of the Old Testament, those ceremonial laws that were intended to set God's people apart in the Old Testament, his chosen nation, those ceremonial laws were fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And to force the Gentiles to do those things was to attach works to the gospel to attach requirements to the gospel, in which case it's no gospel at all. It's not the full and free grace that God gives to us through Jesus Christ, but it becomes a work righteousness, something you have to do, you have to contribute to your own salvation. You've got to be a good practicing Jew. Even if you're a Gentile, you've got to start practicing the, good, uh, the Jewish practices if you want to be saved, if you want to be baptized as a Christian. So, uh, so that was the false teaching that Paul was confronting. And as he does that now, he gives a, 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 a short history of his experience, uh, his source for the message that he was proclaiming. And I, I suppose that's valuable to recognize uh, where was Paul coming from when he was preaching that word and these Jewish Christians, what was their source? Uh, what was their... Uh, What was their credibility? And so Paul lays out a little bit of his biography for us in Galatians chapter 1, which is pretty fascinating. And we're going to tie in a couple of other verses to this uh, from other places in the New Testament to tie these together. But he says in Galatians chapter 1, But I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin, For I did not receive it from man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation from Jesus Christ. That was one of the requirements. To be an apostle meant to have seen, have witnessed the risen, the resurrected Jesus. And that was true for Paul. Now Paul was different than the rest of the apostles because he didn't travel along with Jesus 
uh, for those three years of Jesus' earthly ministry. But Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, appeared to the Apostle Paul. And so we're going to tie in a section of Scripture from Acts chapter 9, where we hear about Paul's experience. In Acts chapter 9, the Apostle Paul is uh, he's persecuting the Christian church. He was zealous for God, and he's persecuting the Christian church. And so we read about how he became a witness of the resurrected Jesus Christ. And so we read in Acts chapter 9, Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any men or women belonging to the way, he might bring them to Jerusalem as prisoners. As he went on his way and was approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? He replied, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you need to do. The men traveling with him stood there speechless. They heard the voice but did not see anyone. They raised Saul up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could not see. They took him by the hand and led him into Damascus. For three days he could not see, and he did not eat or drink." And so it's there that the Apostle Paul, that conversion experience, he goes from being a persecutor of the church to becoming a witness of the resurrected Jesus. He becomes a missionary for Jesus. Now, it doesn't happen overnight, uh, becoming a missionary. That Paul, uh, he does begin very quickly uh, after he's baptized three days later. Uh, God sends this man Ananias to Paul in Damascus while he's still blind. And after being blind for three days, Ananias comes in and he baptizes Paul and and, uh, Paul's eyesight is restored. And immediately, Paul does begin defending the faith and arguing uh, in defense of the risen Jesus Christ, proclaiming that message of the gospel, proclaiming that Jesus is the Messiah and had risen from the dead. What a powerful and awesome message that Paul had. Uh, And so he's talking about that in Galatians. In Galatians chapter 1 at verse 13, he says, Certainly you have heard of my former way of life in Judaism, how I used to persecute the church of God to an extraordinary degree and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my own people because I was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. However, God, who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I could preach him among the Gentiles. At that time, I did not immediately consult with flesh and blood, and I did not go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. Instead, I went away into Arabia, and then I returned again to Damascus. Next, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to meet Cephas, that's Peter, and stayed with him 15 days. Now, Paul's point in all of this, and there's a lot that we could, we could draw from this, but his point is that this message is not something he devised on his own. It's not even something that he learned as some kind of second-hand apostle that he learned from Peter or from any of the other apostles. No, this is something that was revealed to him directly by God. And that reference to three years, uh, some commentators on the Bible think that that reference is, is a comparing basically the same three years that the apostles spent with Jesus uh, during his earthly ministry that the apostle Paul was learning from Jesus directly. In other words, this gospel is from God. It's not of Paul's devising. It makes no sense 
that Paul would subject himself to the kind of persecution that he endured, the suffering that he went through, and the people in the area of Galatia had witnessed it. In one of those cities, Paul had been stoned almost to death. In fact, the, the people who were with him thought he was stoned to death. But by God's grace, he was able to get up and continue on that first missionary journey. Paul subjected himself to all kinds of persecution. Why? For a message that he invented on his own? Absolutely not. This is a message that came from Jesus himself, given to the Apostle Paul to share with uh, the Gentile people. And so Paul becomes a fierce proclaimer of the good news of Jesus Christ, that it is by grace we are saved. By grace. Paul knew that grace of God. He had experienced it. That God didn't let Paul continue down his path of anger and hatred and, and persecuting the Christians, but God intervened in Paul's life. Jesus literally appeared to him on that road to Damascus and knocked him on his butt and struck him blind. But in striking him blind, Jesus gave him sight to see the spiritual truth about God's grace in Jesus Christ, the mercy that we have, the eternal life through him. And that's the same life that you and I enjoy as well. Full and free forgiveness, God's grace given to you and me through Jesus Christ. What an awesome message Paul had to declare and proclaim. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. By grace, O oh Mark, this word of promise, when you are by your sins oppressed, when Satan plays, Ciao.